Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. I'm Ben and I have a fun video for you today. Well, it's going to be fun for me, but you're going to have to do something. I'm going to make you work this time, but I'll explain more about that in a moment. Uh, but today we're looking at similes. In fact, I have 20 of what I think are some of the most common and useful English similes. Now, we use similes in real day-to-day -day English, um, but what are they? Well, they are phrases and expressions which use some form of comparison to describe something in a more sort of emphatic or interesting way. Now, some similes are formed using the word like. Uh, for example, life is like a box of chocolates, which is from the very famous uh, classic film Forrest Gump. But the similes we're looking at today are formed using the structure as plus adjective plus as plus noun. And what these similes basically mean is very. So very and plus whatever the adjective may be. So this is just a really nice way of being more expressive and emphatic. So let's use the first simile as an example, and then I'll explain what you're going to have to do for the rest of the similes. So if we look at the adjective cold, so cold, and we want to say very cold in a more interesting way, and we could say freezing, of course, that's a nice way of saying very cold, but in the, in the form of a simile, we can say as cold as ice, because ice is very cold, of course, it's, it's very obvious, it's very clear. And we use this simile mostly when we're talking about people. When you describe someone who's not very warm or affectionate, you say they're as cold as ice. Maybe just in general, maybe that's their personality, or maybe just at that moment. You could say, for example, is something wrong with John today? He's being as cold as ice. So he's being sort of distant, he's not being warm or affectionate. So I've given you that one, but what I want you to do with the rest of the similes is I want you to guess what the last word of the simile is. So the noun at the end. I'm going to give you the adjective, and as I said, they're all formed in the same structure. So as, mm, as, mm, so as adjective, as noun. So in the first example, the adjective was cold and the noun, the noun was ice. So as cold as ice. Now, the first few uh, similes will be relatively easy or, or at least possible to guess. Uh, they're more sort of literal, like as cold as ice is literal. You know, something is as cold as ice, it's very cold. But as we progress through the 20 similes, you're going to see that they're going to get more difficult. In fact, they're going to be impossible to guess if you don't know these similes already, but it's fun to try it, right? So let's continue with the second simile. And the adjective in this simile is light. So light as in the opposite of heavy. So if something is light, it doesn't weigh much. So what do you think the noun could be here? So as light as what? You have to think of something that is really light. Yeah, you've probably got this one, but it's a feather. So, you know, feathers are extremely light. So we often say it's as light as a feather. So that's a nice simile and very common. So somebody may say to you, uh, do you want some help carrying that bag? You say, no, no, it's fine. It's as light as a feather. So it's very light. That's what you're saying. It's very light. And moving on to number three, we have white. The adjective is white, which is a color, or I think it's technically a lack of color. But what do you think? If you want to say that something is very white, what noun would you use to compare to white? Now, I'll give you a clue. We're referring to somebody's appearance here. So when you're saying somebody is as white as, um, you're talking about them having a lack of color in their face usually. So perhaps somebody's ill or perhaps they've had a shock. So what is something that's very white that you could use as a simile? Well, it's a sheet, a sheet. So as I said, we use this when somebody is ill or at least they look ill. Uh, so maybe you see your friend and they look very pale. They have no color in their skin and you, and you say, are you feeling okay? You're, you're as white as a sheet. Okay, I'm gonna give you a big clue now for the next six similes. And that is that the nouns in all of these similes, the next six similes are animals. So the last word of all of these similes are some, some kind of animals. Okay, so number four, the next one is for the adjective blind. So if you want to say that someone is very blind, you can compare them to 
uh, an animal, a particular animal. And I'll give you one more clue for this particular simile, and that is that it contains uh, alliteration. So alliteration is where the first sound of two or more words is the same. It's very common in, in English in these sort of more idiomatic uh, phrases. Um, and in this case, blind obviously begins with a b sound, so the animal that is the noun in this simile also begins with b. So what do you think it is? If you need to pause the video, then do so, but I'll tell you now, it's as blind as a bat. We, we don't use it in a literal sense. You know, if I take off my glasses, I could say I'm as blind as a bat. It's not true, I'm not really completely blind, but uh, I can see a lot less than with glasses, of course. But it's a more emphatic way to say that somebody has very poor eyesight, so you can say they're as blind as a bat. We can use it in football, for example, when we're talking about the referee. If you feel that the referee has been making some very bad decisions, you can say, well, oh, that referee is as, as blind as a bat. Okay, moving on to number five. Again, this one contains an animal. The last word is an animal. Um, and the adjective is timid, timid. And we use timid to describe a person who is easily frightened, um, not very brave, a little bit shy. So when you're thinking of an animal for this simile, you have to think of an animal that is very f easily frightened, a very little animal that runs away whenever there's any sign of danger. Yes, it's as timid as a mouse. So you could describe, maybe you have a colleague at work who, who maybe is a very good worker, very intelligent, but in the meetings, they don't talk much because they're very timid. They're, they, they're not very confident. They're quite shy and easily frightened. Okay, the next one, number six, the adjective is strong. Strong, so again, the noun in this simile is an animal. And to help you a little bit, you have to keep in mind that most of these similes come from many decades or even centuries ago. So people were living in a very different world then. So imagine somebody living a hundred years ago who wants to describe someone as being very strong. They would use something that is, you know, around them in their day-to-day -day lives. So an animal that was used a lot for, for pulling things and for working in the fields at that time was an ox, an ox. So as strong as an ox. By the way, an ox is basically a castrated bull, and they were used a lot in the past before tractors and other machinery to help the farmers pull heavy equipment. Okay, moving on to the next one now, and the adjective is wise, wise. Now you may know this one, you may be familiar with this one because it's quite a, quite a famous simile, if it's possible to have a famous simile, but again, we're looking for an animal to, to be the noun here, so as wise as what? What type of animal do you associate with being wise? I think this is common in other cultures and languages. So again, pause the video if you want to think about it a little bit longer, but it's as wise as an owl. So if you want to describe someone as being very knowledgeable, um, usually related to experience, so we usually describe older people as being wise, so when they have the knowledge and experience, then for some reason, I don't know why, but we use owls to describe someone as being wise, so as wise as an owl. And number eight. Now, the adjective here is a little bit trickier, but it's stubborn, stubborn. So just to make sure you understand the meaning of stubborn, it means obstinate, basically. So a stubborn person, it's very difficult to change their mind about something. They, they're very determined to do what they want. Now, that can be good in some situations, but Usually stubborn is used in a more negative context. But again, we're looking for an animal. So what kind of an animal do you associate with stubborn? Now, if you don't know this one, to be honest, you're probably not going to be able to guess it because it's not a very common animal that you, you would know. Uh, it's mule, to be as stubborn as a mule. Now, a mule is like a donkey, but not quite a donkey. I think the picture that I found for a mule is not actually a mule, it's a donkey, but I thought it was a funny picture anyway. Um, but a mule is basically a cross between a horse and a donkey, um, and they're famous for being stubborn. Very difficult to convince them to do what you want. So as stubborn as a mule. Do you know anybody who is as stubborn as a mule? Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, and the adjective here, again, it's a tricky adjective, but it's sly. Sly. Now sly basically means cunning. But again, that's quite a difficult adjective. A sly or a cunning person is someone who is deceiving in a clever way. So they do things in a deceiving way 
uh, to get what they want, basically. So what do you think? What animal would we use with Sly? Well, it's fox to be as sly as a fox. Now, I'm not exactly sure why we consider foxes as being sly, but I can imagine, right, that we consider them very intelligent, you know, when they can somehow get into the chicken coop and, and kill all the chickens, uh, the typical enemy of farmers. So, yeah, over the years, they've, they've got this reputation of being very sly and cunning, so as sly as a fox. And the next adjective we're looking at is old. So, old. What do you think we could use for old in this simile? As old as what? You could say a house, right? A house is very old, but no, something older than that. A tree, you know, you have some very old trees. Some trees are hundreds of years old, but no, even older than that. What is really old? Older than anything you can imagine. Again, this is a very difficult one to guess, but it's hills. As old as the hills. So, yeah, you think the, the land, the geography around us is older than anything we've constructed or anything we've grown, so as old as the hills. So you could describe someone as being as old as the hills or often a joke, for example, if it's a very old joke that everybody's heard, so oh, that's as old as the hills, that joke. So just really emphasizing that something is very, very old. Okay, the next one, the adjective we're looking at here is cool. Cool. You may have heard this one before. Again, it's quite a, a common uh, simile, but if you haven't, it's going to be very difficult to guess. But it is another example of alliteration, so we're having the same sound repeated twice. So k and k, so as cool as something. In fact, this sound appears twice in the the noun here. Okay, if you don't know it, pause the video to think about it for a while, and I'll tell you it's as cool as a cucumber, as cool as a cucumber. So we use this simile to describe someone who is very calm in pressured situations. So very cool, of course, right? Very cool, as cool as, as cool as a cucumber. And the next one is one of the most common adjectives of all, and it's good, good. But we use good in this simile to describe behavior. So when someone behaves very well, we say they are as good as and this, this noun. Uh, so often we use it for children. So maybe you've left your children with a babysitter and when you get home and you say, how were the children? Did they behave well? And the babysitter may say, yes, they were as good as gold, as good as gold. So it's a bit strange here, right? Why do we use gold to describe behavior? But again, it's the alliteration. So it sound good, gold, it's the same sound. So it just sounds nice. But also possibly the origin is from um, gold being the best a form of payment, right? You can't get any better than gold. So something is very good. It's as good as gold. But in modern use, as I said, it's, it's to describe the behavior of, of usually children. It could also be animals. You could say Amy is as good as gold, although she's not always. Sometimes she's quite naughty and mischievous. But yeah, as good as gold, a nice simile. And the next one, a very common adjective again, it's happy. So happy. Now I have to warn you, from now on, these are very, very difficult similes to guess. You, I would be very surprised if you could guess the, the noun. Maybe you know these similes already, but if you don't, it's going to be very difficult. These are really quite idiomatic similes. You know, the first few, like as cold as ice, as light as a feather, they're quite literal, right? They're quite easy to guess, but now they're more difficult. So we have a couple of options here. We could say as happy as Larry as happy as Larry. Don't ask me why, don't ask me who Larry is, but you can say somebody's very happy, they're as happy as Larry. But the better simile, the one I want to teach you today, is as happy as a clam. Now, the full expression here, the full idiom, is as happy as a clam at high water. So this is where you can understand the origin of this simile, because a clam is happy at high water because it's protected. You know, when the tide or the water is low, it's exposed and, you know, it's open to predators. So birds can come and attack it. But when the, the, the water is high or the tide is high, then, you know, they're protected. They're under the water, so they're happier. Apparently, that's the origin. It doesn't matter that much. You just have to remember that that's the, 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 the simile we use. It's to be as happy as a clam. So if you want to describe someone as being very happy, you can say they're as happy as a clam. And the next one is one of my favorites, but it's a bit confusing, so I need to explain it. Um, the adjective is fit. So fit in the meaning of 
very healthy, to be very healthy. So again, it's an example of alliteration, to be as fit as a f something. So again, very difficult to guess, but you may know it, you may have heard it before. Uh, but it's as fit as a fiddle, as fit as a fiddle. Now a fiddle is another name for a violin. And I don't know if this is the origin, but this is how I imagine it. You imagine in a band with many different uh, musical instruments, people playing different instruments, maybe the drums, the guitar, the keyboards, uh, cello, I don't know, all these different in instruments. And then you have the fiddle, the violin, which is probably the most uh, active, you know, it's the liveliest of, of the instruments, so it's a lot of movement. So it looks very healthy, right? It's, it's moving a lot, it's active, so that's how I think of it and that's how you can perhaps remember it. So perhaps a friend of yours has been ill recently and you can say, how are you doing? Are you better? So yeah, I'm, I'm as fit as a fiddle, 100% better. Okay, moving on to the next one. Uh, the adjective is clean this time, clean. So what noun do you think we could use in this simile for clean? Well, if you don't know it, you're not going to guess it, to be honest, because it's very strange. As I said, we're getting into very idiomatic similes here. Uh, but I did actually share this in a community post a couple of weeks ago uh, at the time of making this video. So if, if you've seen that, then you'll know. Uh, but it's as clean as a whistle. So a whistle is that object that referees in football matches and other sports use uh, to blow into, to make a sound. And apparently that's the origin of as clean as a whistle. It's referring to the clean sound that a whistle makes. But of course, in modern use, uh, we use it for things that are not dirty. If something is very clean, it's not dirty. So the example I used in my community post is that I'm trying to sell my car at the moment, so it needs to be as clean as a whistle, you know, completely clean, spotless, spick and span, which is another option. But uh, as, a, as a simile, it's as clean as a whistle. Okay, the next one's a particularly nice one, I think, and it's with the adjective fresh, fresh. And we're using fresh here to describe a person. So a person who is full of energy and invigorated. Maybe they've woken up in the morning and they're feeling very fresh. Uh, very difficult to guess again, but when you see the picture, perhaps you'll, you'll get the idea. But it's to be as fresh as a daisy, as fresh as a daisy. So in that picture, you can see it, daisies are very colorful and so they look very awake, right? <laughs> very awake, sort of facing the sun and uh, lively and energetic. So you can describe someone, maybe yourself, as being as fresh as a, as a daisy. So, oh, I feel really good today. I feel as fresh as a daisy. I slept really well last night. Okay, these last few similes are extremely idiomatic. So I would be very surprised and impressed if you could guess the noun in these these particular similes. Uh, but they are very common and they are used in day-to-day -day English, so they're worth knowing. And the next one is used with the adjective keen, so to be keen. So keen in this context is to be uh, eager to do something. If you're keen to do something, you're e eager or enthusiastic to do something. So what do you think the noun is? You're not going to get it. It's mustard, to be as keen as mustard. So it means very keen. So if somebody for example, is invited to a party, you could say, well, are you sure David really wants to come to the party? Oh yeah, he's as keen as mustard. So he, he's really looking forward to the party. He's really eager and enthusiastic to attend the party. So he's as keen as mustard. Now, apparently the origin here is that, you know, mustard in the past was this, this you know, very sort of spicy, tangy flavor sauce to, to add to meat. So, you know, if you're eager, you're enthusiastic, you're, it's a very strange origin and, you know, it's not worth analysing too much. You just need to remember that to be as keen as mustard, it means to be very keen. Okay, the next one is going to need some explaining because the adjective is right. Now, of course, right has many meanings depending on the context, but in this case, right means good, fine, correct, no problems. Uh, sometimes used when we're referring to health, again, similar to as fit as a fiddle. Um, and again, we're looking at alliteration, so as right as something. Very difficult to guess, but it's as right as rain, <laughs> as right as rain. So if something is good, you know, if you're feeling good, you know, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm as right as rain, all good, no problems. Apparently the origin here is in England. It, of course, it or originated in England where it rains a lot, so, you know, it's normal, that's completely normal if it rains 
it's predictable, it means everything's in order, everything's correct because it's raining in England, so it's as right as rain. Again, a bit of a strange origin, but maybe it will help you to remember the, the simile. Okay, the next one is different to all the others, and I'll explain why. <laughs> the adjective is clear, so to be clear, if something is clear, but in this case, we're actually saying the opposite. We use this simile in an ironic way, almost sarcastic way, to say that something is not at all clear. So, what do you think would be some, a noun to describe something which is not at all clear? Well, it's mud, as clear as mud. So this one, as I said, it's used in a sort of humorous and sarcastic way to say that something is, is just completely unclear. You just don't understand it. Maybe you could say the teacher's explanation of the third conditional was as clear as mud. <laughs> so it was completely unclear, very confusing, not at all clear. Okay, we're finishing now with one adjective, but two different similes. So we have one adjective which is used in two different, very common similes. And the adjective is thick. Again, thick can have different meanings in different contexts. In the first simile we're looking at, thick means stupid. So when we say somebody is as thick as this, we're saying they're stupid. Now, this is a bit strange because we're using a different meaning of thick with the noun. So I'll explain. The simile is as thick as two short planks. So planks are flat pieces of wood. So if you put two short planks together, the length of the planks is really irrelevant, but this simile is this way. If you put two short planks together, they're, they're thick, right? One on top of the other is quite thick. So we have the two different uses of thick, thick as in stupid and thick as in not thin, in the same simile, but the simile itself is referring to someone who is very stupid. So you know, my, my friend is a really nice guy, but he's as thick as two short planks. So he's very stupid. Not a nice way to talk about your friend, but maybe it's true. And the last simile now, again using the adjective thick, but it's not really using any of the meanings as thick. It's just a simile that has its own meaning separate from the meaning of the, the adjective. And it's as thick as thieves. So we can consider this more of an idiom than a simile. It's, it's referring to two people who are very good friends and they're kind of a bit mischievous. They're, they're planning something, so like thieves. Um, so usually referring to young people, kids usually. So, you know, when you have a really good friend, your best friend, and you're always talking in secret and planning something mischievous. Quite a strange and a very specific idiom, but I had to mention it at the end because, as I said, it uses this adjective uh, thick, as thick as thieves. Okay, I hope that was all crystal clear for you, not as clear as mud. Uh, some really nice similes there for you to use, so I highly recommend you come up with your own examples to, to have stand a better chance of remembering them all. Maybe share them in the comments, that would be interesting. And I'll see you very soon for another video.